All right, today, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna be looking at lesson 3B, describing time series plots. So last time we looked at how to construct them, today we're gonna look at some information that we can gain from looking at them. So you're gonna see that today's lesson is very visual, um, but it's then there's going to be some work for you to do because there's also a lot of vocabulary and you're gonna to have to learn these terms and to be able to describe these properly, okay? All right, so first we're just gonna talk a little bit about what it is we're gonna be looking for. What we're doing is we're gonna be looking for patterns in these time series plots. And the patterns that you're gonna see are gonna have specific names and it's really important that you understand these words. We're gonna look at the definitions in a, at one by one as we go and we're gonna look at examples of how you can recognize that one of these things is happening. So your job is going to be to learn these words and to be able to apply them, all right? And we're gonna look at several of these, trends, seasonality, et cetera. We'll look at them at one at a time and then we'll do some exercises where you're looking for these. Now you have to remember that one or all of these features can be found in a time series plot. So looking at your plot, you could theoretically, not, I doubt it, but you see all of these, but not very, not very often. Usually there's going to be a few really clear cut ideas. And the, the main thing that you're going to be looking for, the most basic idea that you're looking for is something called a trend, okay? So a trend simply means a tendency for the values to generally increase or decrease over a significant period of time. So we're not, it's hard to say that something is a trend if it's only a few days or even a few weeks or months, but if it's over a period of years, then you, and the same thing is happening, then you can, you can determine that it is a trend. And the easiest way to determine a trend from a time series plot is by just looking at the plot and drawing what's called a trend line. Now, we're not gonna concentrate on the mathematics of a trend line, we're just going to look at what a trend line looks like and talk a little bit about how you can determine the best line possible just by glancing at it. So if you look here, these red lines that are on these graphs, so you have your time series chart. We don't know what the time is, this period is, and we don't know what the thing is we're measuring as the data. We're just giving this as an example. And you'll see that they've drawn a red line that kind of starts at the beginning and goes all the way to the end. So if you start where, they, where the graph starts and stop where it stops, you'll see that it pretty much cuts the line in half. So we can say that this is an example of an increasing trend, increasing because it's going up over time, All right? Now, mathematically, this may not be exactly the line for the trend to, to represent this trend, but we're not gonna worry about that. All you're gonna do is just kind of, uh, just eyeball it. Here, you'll see that if you cut through the middle and end at the, where the graph ends, you're gonna see that this line is going down over time if it's going down over time, then you have what's called a decreasing trend. Now, not all lines are gonna be de increasing or decreasing at steady rates. You can see that there's lots of up and down, ups and downs in, in both of these, but if you, draw, if you can draw a line that represents the idea or the trend, then you can make that kind of determination, either increasing or decreasing. The important thing, again, is to make sure that you're using the right terminology. That terminology is going to be really important and that's something you're just going to have to work on uh, learning those. But of course you're going to be doing some homework where you're doing just that. Okay? All right. So we, it's easy to see the, that these were going up and down. You can also have tr overall trends in a time series that change. So for example, if you look at these trends, from about 1930, eh, 1932 one or so to 19, say 58 maybe, who knows, just to get it the best you can, you'll see that this the trend was, there was an upward trend, right? But then from 1958 to 19, uh, say 1970, the overall trend was decreasing. 
And then finally from 1972 to about 1998 or so, it continued to decrease, but at a much slower rate. Okay. The only one that they didn't put on here is what would happen if the line was flat. Oh, that's a terrible line. So if the line stayed flat, if that's the case, then you have what's called a constant trend. The, if it doesn't change, if there's no change, then the line is considered to be constant. Okay. So you can't have more than one trend in a particular graph a time series graph. So just look at to see if they're big overall patterns. Now again, we can tell that these are trends because they're covering a large time span. From 1930 to, to, to the year 2000 is a very long period of time. If this was just a week and it was doing this, then you couldn't really call it a trend if it went up from Monday to Tuesday and then down from Tuesday to Thursday, okay? But if it's, if it's over several years or a longer time period, then you can easily say it's a trend. And we're going to learn how to use these trends to be able to make predictions that's a, a, about what has happened or what is going to happen, what we think will happen in the future. Okay. Now, so that's what a trend line looks like. And again, there's nothing very scientific about making it. You just draw the best line that you can possibly make. What is important, though, is when you're just terming it, especially in, the, in an example like this where there are several trend lines, is you need to define them. So 1940 to 1961, the birth rate grew dramatically. The trend line was quite high. And from 1961 to 1972-ish, the uh, birth rate fell dramatically because, again, it's a very sharp line. But trend line three is not so dramatic. It's still declining, but at a slower rate. Okay, so as long as you can describe it and as long as you can justify it, right, then you're pretty safe in using these trend lines. Okay, make sure you're very specific about them though. The next one we're going to look at is something called a cycle. Now, a cycle is still over a period of greater than a year, so we're still talking about a long period of time here, but what happens is we have periodic movements. Okay, you're going to see another one that has periodic movements, but it's for periods of less than a year, a small, shorter period. So for a cycle, it's just periodic movements in a period over a year. So you still have that long time span, but you see a lot of movement. Because if you try to draw a trend line for this, you might say that this is increasing slightly from the start to the finish. But really what's happening is it's going up and down in a fairly predictable pattern. If you look, it goes up and then down, and up and then down in a, in a particular pattern. And it looks like at about 10 years or maybe 11 years, they say. So about 10 years or 11 years. So every, over that period, it, it increases steadily then, and then has a dramatic fall. Okay? So... And again, because we're going over a long period of time, we can describe this as a cycle. All right. Now, the next one we're going to look at is much like a cycle, but this is called seasonality. And if you think about that very word seasonality, you think of the seasons, summer, spring, etc. And so that's what seasonality shows. Now, this one, it goes over more, the more than one, uh, one year. But if you look at it, what you're really looking at are monthly or, or quarterly, in this case, changes. And you see that it drops till you get to June, and then it rises until you get to December. Then after December, it drops again until you get to June. It rises to December. This stayed a little flat right there, but you still think that that is a rise. Right? Then it dropped again in June, rose into December. And these are uh, hotel room occupancies, occupancy rates. And you would expect this to happen because this is summer vacation, right? School holidays. So you would expect people to be traveling. So hotel occupancy would go, go up. Here we get school comes back into session. So you, the occupancy goes down in a fairly predictable way. So if you can determine those ways and those pieces, then you can see 
how that you could describe this as happening seasonally. Summer, occupancy goes way up. Autumn, occupancy goes way down. Okay, so again, because we're talking about shorter time periods here, we're not talking about a cycle as much as we're talking about a season or seasonality. Now, do, do notice that the tr overall trend from start to finish is an increasing trend. So again, remember, you can have more than one thing happen. So this, the trend, the overall trend is that this thing is increasing, but then there is a seasonal change. So there is season, seasonality. And when you're talking about it, make sure you're, you're, you're talking about the actual trend and give details about why you think that is a trend, etc. So your job is to determine, is to memorize these words and look at the definitions and determine which one fits the pattern. And again, it can have more than one. All right. Let's look at the next one. The next one is something called structural change. Now, structural change, when you're dealing with structural change, it's a sudden change in the pattern. But it's a change in the pattern itself. So it's not just a big upward trend and then, and then it goes back down. It goes up and stays up, or it goes down and stays down. So if you look here, at February, there was a sharp increase. And then it stayed fairly constant until we got to June. After June, there was a sharp decrease, and then it stayed fairly constant to the end of the graph. So you see that there, was, there were structural changes here to here to here. So it went up and then stayed constant. It went down and then stayed constant. This is what's called structural change. We have a big change that persists over time. And in that case, you're dealing with structural change. Okay. Now again, uh, you would expect that to happen if you look at this one, February to June. Um, the, uh, the electric bill in this house went way up, so they're perhaps doing heating. And then in, as it got warmer, the electric bill went down. Perhaps they just opened the windows and they didn't use their air conditioning. Obviously not Brisbane. So watch for what are called structural changes. Now, but if you look at this graph, though, we could also draw an overall trend. But you need to worry about context when you're thinking about that. If I drew an overall trend here, the overall trend is from January to December that the electric bill fell. But this is just for a year. So that is a pretty short time period to say that there's an overall trend. We would need several years of data to be able to say this is a trend. So it's it's very if it's very iffy to say that this is a trend because what's going to happen is at some point here this is going to go way back up. So it's hard to say that there's a trend here again because of the short amount of time. If you had data over several years that re that looked like that then you could say that there was a trend, right? Again, watch your watch your time periods when you're determining if something is one of is a trend or seasonality, etc. So that's structural change. You can also have what are called outliers. Now, outliers are individual values that really change look different from the other values. So if you're looking at this particular at this particular time series, we're talking about electrical use, electricity use and over a period of, of days. So this is only 14 days, so we're just a two-week period. And you can see that there's a general trend. That it stays pretty constant over, those, over that two-week period. And we probably expect that because we wouldn't expect weather or anything to change dramatically over that two-week period. But if you look Right here on the fourth day, there was a really sharp decline in electric use. And that, that presents something called an outlier. It's very different from the other pieces of data. And you can describe it in lots of different ways. Perhaps uh, the family was away that day, so the electricity use went down. There can be lots of reasons for outliers, but what you need to make sure of is that you're actually dealing with an outlier. 
And when we are dealing with it, we simply ignore the outliers when we're dealing with trends, but then we always mention them. Now, you've got to be careful, though, because the tendency is to see outliers where they don't exist. Now, there's a mathematical formula for it, and we'll talk about that later on in the term, but you just make sure that it's very clear. Like in this one, it's very clear that day four is an outlier. It's so far different from all of the other values that it has to be an outlier. So you would say, you would give this an overall trend, again, being very loose with trend here because it's, uh, we'd have to say, the trend for this, this two week period. In other words, be very, very sure that we tell them that this particular two week period is, uh, is all we're talking about. We're not talking about the trend of for over over years. And then it has an outlier on day four where it dropped to a certain value. Make sure that you also, when you're talking about these outliers, give their values, right? And you can also give a theory of why you think that is. Now again, theory, because we don't know, right? Unless they give you enough information in the in the problem to be able to choose. Okay? Now, and the last thing we want to look at is what happens when you have irregular or random fluctuations. Sometimes graphs are so irregular or random that you can't really see anything for them, right? So if you can't choose anything because, from the graph because it's so irregular, then you can just say that, it's, that the fluctuations are too irregular to, to be able to determine. This is pretty rare. Most data shows some type of pattern, but you could have data that doesn't. So be, be aware of that, okay? You could also say that there seems to be a, an increasing or decreasing trend, but the pattern is very random and, and with lots of irregular fluctu fluctuations, so it's difficult to say for certain, all right? beauty of statistics you can pretty much defend anything as long as you as long as you sound as if you know what you're talking about okay so here are your definitions a trend that's when there's a long term upward or downward movement in a time series now it could also be flat and then to which case it's constant cycles again we're talking about a time series that lasts over a, a greater period than 1 year and we're talking about how much time it takes to complete an up and down movement. So it may go up in the spring and down in the, in the autumn or something, okay? Seasonality, uh, that one, we're having a shorter time period. It's a cycle, but in a shorter time period. Structural change, sudden change, and then the pattern stays the same. Sudden change, pattern stays the same. Finally, outliers, very different values that really stand out. Be careful. Don't call something an outlier that's not. So for examples, we looked at several of these like here. This drops down and then goes back up. That does not make that an outlier, right? It's fit it well within the rest of the pattern, so be careful. And then finally, irregular or random fluctuations, just if, if you can't really see what's happening, that can't reasonably attribute it to any of the others, then it has to be irregular or random. Okay, so what you're going to do in this particular exercise is we're going to be looking at just given some trend lines and you're going to be describing what you see. Now, if you can defend it, it exists, all right? But try to stick with the big ideas. So if you look here at plot A, it's going over a long period of years, so this would not be seasonality, okay? But if it's doing the same thing over and over in, within a year, you could have seasonality. So in this case, it goes up until you get to the new year, then it goes down, then it goes up until you get to the new year, then it goes down, up. So this is, this is showing seasonality, right? Since it's also over a period of many years, we could say that there is a cycle ha happening here, yeah? We could also say that since this is happening over several years, that there's a trend, slightly decreasing trend here. So again, you can say that there are several things happening here. You just need to be able to describe them well, okay? So you just describe what you're seeing. Then you do, do that for each one, right? Here, this one in C, 
there's definitely a trend, an upward trend, so it's obviously increasing slightly, not dramatically. And because the pieces are going up and down so with, with so many fluctuations, um, if those fluctuations match it, during the different years, you could say that there is seasonality or a cycle. It's going down here. Let's, let's say that's in the spring. In 2015, it's going down dramatically. 2016, down dramatically. 2017, down dramatically. So yeah, you're looking at probably some, so a cycle here, some seasonality. Whatever this is measuring, we have no idea what it's measuring. All we're doing, worried about is just making some kind of description for it. Okay? If you can justify it and give details, then you can, you can say it. All right? So, you, so be careful. Your answer may not exactly match what they say in the back of the book or in the, in the work deck solutions if you're looking at this online version. But, again, if you can justify it, then you're pretty safe. Okay, so your job then is to remember these terms, make sure that you know these terms and what they mean and when you can use them, right? So if we're talking about seasonality, I'm only allowed to look at like this bit, but does and see if there's some change that's, that's seasonal. And then I can look at this bit and then this bit, right? We can look at a year's data at a time and see if the same thing is happening. And if that's the case, then I can say it's seasonal. Then if it happened, again, if it's happening the same way in each year, we can also say that not only is it seasonal, it's also a, showing a cycle over years, over time. Okay, so just look at the pieces and, and build a pattern and describe that pattern, all right? Make sure you use values. This is a math class. We want to see some numbers. If you don't have numbers to support your data, then you really don't have anything but a, a guess. Okay? So what we're going to do is, or what you're going to do, is you're going to learn these terms, and then you're going to do the odd-numbered exercises 1 through 9. And I'll post this on, this on your weekly assignments so that you'll know exactly which assignment to work on. And... So your job, again, will be to learn the terms and to do those exercises describing those. We're just going to give you lots of graphs like this, lots of time series plots, and you're going to talk and you're going to describe what's happening as well as compare some of them. Okay? All right.